but we could just might be the best Archon yet. Now this is probably a statement that you could make about every new Archon, and one that I probably have made. That releases and that's because Genshin tends to make them so. Especially if you get them within their respective first banners. Ever since 1.0, when Venti was the first banner out, he was revered as the strongest character and a must have. Then other characters came out and that sort of overshadowed our animal Archon. <coughs> Kaza. <coughs> and every Archon since then trumped the previous from Zhongli to his massive, I mean massive shield, to Raiden with her insane energy recharge, to Nahida doing pretty much everything known to mankind, and then Furina with her incredible damage boosting burst. So if we were to follow and continue the trend, Mavuika is going to be absolutely the meta for a while. Not to mention how strong Nathan characters have been so far and how unique they are as well. We might be in for a wild ride here. There are probably already some suspicious things that you might see about her kit, but today we are going to make inferences and guesses as to why she is going to be so powerful. Now, usually, whenever a new Archon comes out, it tends to be on the 5.2 banners, but Marika for some reason is on the 5.3 banners. Hmm. Now, I'm not one to make any assumptions, but all I can say is that they're cooking up something pretty great here. Not to mention, she's going to be releasing with another 5-star character, Sitlali, so yeah, there is a lot to go off of here. Now, Archons, whenever they first release on their first banner, they make them really, really good for absolutely no reason. And I mean, the Spiral Abyss becomes so easy, you can clear them with only the Archon character, and whatever else kind of event, domain stuff that happens, usually just makes the game pretty easy to clear out, especially the quote-unquote end game modes. We are looking from the utmost broadest perspective, Mavika is supposed to be Genshin Impact's God of War, or rather, Archon of War. I'm not talking about Kratos where, you know, she's about to try to eradicate every god from existence, or Archon rather, because of hate or to attempt to battle fate. I am talking about just being an absolute powerhouse and pretty much a, just the best character on the team, raising the entire team with some sort of buff or just being an incredibly strong character and can carry your entire team on your back. Previous characters we've already seen being pyro characters are already really, and I mean really, powerful. I'm looking at Orlochino being really incredibly strong for absolutely no reason. Of course, she's a harbinger so that makes that, but she's just really strong. And because of her power element, she has access to vaporize an insane amount of potential just from that alone, or melt, or some other sort of elemental reaction. From that alone, she's already going to be pretty good. But we also have to mention other characters like Hu Tao, which is already pretty strong, and it's just a long list of pyro characters that tend to be really strong. Now, if we look at the elemental resonance, we see that pyro actually buffs attack percent. If we go off of elemental resonance alone, we can see all the archons have something to do with the elemental resonance. Whether it's the pyro characters, which we are going to talk about, they buff the attack percentage. So if we go based off of that, then Mavuika might buff attack percentage too. Since Electro gives you elemental resonance of energy recharge, since uh, Hydro gives you a little bit of healing, and go on from there as well. It's just a lot of stuff to do with their own elemental resonance, and then they kind of have some sort of similarity to the Archon as well. So if we go based off of that, we might see a nice buff going on with Mavuika. How about we just take a look at some cinematics to see how powerful Mavuika can be. So, in this clip, we see Mavuika just beating the absolute poopy out of a Capitano. Now, though it was not easy since Capitano can hold his own against the Archon, seeing he is a harbinger of uh, multiple centuries, she deals significant damage to him with the use of Kenich's weapon, no less, not even her own. 
Then she deals a decisive blow that injures Capitano as he makes his escape. Mavuka was oddly enough still holding back. She has a much stronger potential that could be activated at any time, but to activate it, she would be sacrificing her powers. We saw this when Movika used her strength to keep the flames, and because of that, she tried to go and save the rest of her crew, which is Traveler, uh, Kachina, and whoever was there. Through this, she also used up all of her strength as she smashed the entirety of the rocky ceiling above the aforementioned place to save the Traveler. Now, as we made our way out of the domain, we kind of saw that she now lays dormant to her true strength, which is unfortunate because we would really want to see what she could do. But then we see a clip of Mavrika unlocks her latent potential thanks to the help of the Chosen Warriors as she destroys the Abyssal Contamination in the sky. But as they said, this can only be done because she is Mavrika. And that means that because she has done it, she is now due to um, perish for the rest of um, the history of Tevat. Though, I cannot say right now that that is going to be the case, because if we know Genshin Impact at all, the Archon is probably going to survive and, I don't know, the Traveler is going to save them or something, right? That is going to be probably the story of the new Archon quest that's going to be coming. So I don't put it past them to just, you know, suddenly make her alive after that. And because of that, I am going to pretty much hope for an impressive show from Marika as well, because that is what Archons do. Even though she quote unquote does not have her power anymore, right? Usually Archons, you know, tend to be like that, but they still are pretty powerful either way. That's how they become Archons. So, if we go based off that alone, you already know that. And Archons are pretty strong in general. And if we don't know that already, what are we doing here, right? But we do already know this. But this Archon is pretty special. She is supposed to be the old, you know, fighting Archon. And she has to deal with all this stuff with resurrection. So, I wouldn't put it past her to be the strongest Archon lore-wise. Probably not. But she is probably going to be the strongest in the game. I'm sure of it. So, quote unquote, strongest is a really you know weird word in Genshin Impact because there is no such thing. Because there's a lot of Archons that do different things that make them respectively good at what they do. Anyways, that was the gist of the one I wanted to say. So, I wanted to discuss pretty much only that. So, if you guys did enjoy that, let me know in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next one very soon. Bye.